Okay, here I go. Just take a deep breath. You don't need to. You have a nice vein. Here I go. One, two, three. Halfway done. Okay. You take that off in about 10 minutes, okay? Thank you. You did great. Now we're just going to process it. Put it in the centrifuge. I am filling one of the chambers with the first um, 60 cc's of blood. It's actually a little less than 60 since we need to put some anticoagulant in there first. Biorich Medical is a leader in autologous regenerative medicine, specializing in superior and exclusive biologic devices that support improved outcomes of regenerative cellular therapies. With vast experience in biologic and medical devices, we represent the exclusive ProPlast system and Emsight Corporation's premium devices, Pure PRP and Pure BMC. And we're gonna put it in the centrifuge for one and a half minutes, or 1.5 minutes, at uh, 3.8 RPMs, or 3,800 RPMs. Now that it has reached the full RPMs, it'll spin for one and a half minutes. The Executive 2 centrifuge, designed to work specifically with all of our devices, the precision process of the Executive centrifuge delivers unsurpassed and reproducible performance. So now, we are going to remove the RBCs so we can concentrate the platelets and not have any RBCs or neutrophils. So I take the smaller syringe and remove any of that RBCs that can be stuck in the tube. I'm trying to get it as pure as possible. So I get closer to the bottom, I slow down a little bit to avoid any of the RBCs to come into the syringe up here. So I stopped before. Now we're going to put it in the second chamber so we can put it for a second spin. And we're not going to need this anymore, so this is going to be discarded. And the second tube will do the same process. You grab the 10 cc syringe to remove any of the extra RBCs and that's stuck in the tube to keep the PRP pure. Slowly pull without getting any of the RBCs. As soon as I get to the bottom, they're slowing down because I don't want to get any of the red blood cells into the pure PRP here. Then we fill the second chamber. I'm going to put this, the PRP now for a second spin. The second spin will be for five minutes at 3.8 RPMs. Now the second spin is done, and we are really close to being finished. First part, you attach the syringes to the chamber. You just pull off the PPP or the platelet pour. Want to make sure we leave 
about 5 cc's. So I can remove this. This is a PPP that we will use to create the proplast concentration. And we will put the rest of the air in there. And now we want to mix it. The excess air in the syringe helps capture the platelets that are sticky at the bottom of the chamber and mix the platelets well. So now we have the PRP end result here. On this one, we are not going to use the stop cock. So I can show you that you could do it either way. Just put a 60 cc syringe and take the PPP. Perfect. So this is a PPP. And now I'm going to add the syringe with the air. And again, the air helps to capture the platelets, sticky platelets that are at the bottom of the chamber. And now we can mix it. You can now see that the platelets that were stuck at the bottom are mixed with the PRP. And now the PRP is ready to inject. Just pull it. This is a leftover PBP, which is a platelet pour, basically full of water and proteins. With the ProPlus, we're going to concentrate those proteins just like we do with the PRP. So you got to make sure you just pull off the blue cap, attach the syringe, making sure that this is nice and tight. You don't want to leakage, and you want to prime to get rid of any excess air. Once I see a little bit of the PBP coming out of the top, I add the 30 cc syringe right on top. Now, I'm just going to push it through. After priming the tube, you will end up with half of what you started of the PPP, which we started with 15 cc's, and we want to ideally get it down to 7 cc's. And you can see the top syringe filling up with air. So here's our and result in the protein plasma concentrate. To add the protein plasma to the PRP, you can easily attach and add the desired amount. So I'll be doing the facet joints on both sides from L3 through L5, as well as the central ligaments. And then on the right side, additionally, we'll be doing transforaminal at L3-4 and at L4-5. Now we're going to mark the L3-4 entry point for the transforaminal approach. One, two, three, little poke. Good. Here comes the anesthetic. Little sting. A little discomfort, a little sting. Okay. So you're going to feel a little pressure. Okay. And let me know at any point if you need a little break, OK? okay. So now we're just going to check a lateral view to see my depth. I'm going to give you just a little bit more anesthetic. A little more pressure. 
pressure. Okay, so now I'm hooking up my PRP. And we're just gonna go down just a couple of more millimeters. Okay, so we're gonna put a little bit of this cocktail right before the, I penetrate the transforaminal fascia, about one cc. Sometimes even just kind of rubbing the area and can be a little helpful for the achiness. So now, um, why don't we give the right side a break and we'll do the left side with the facets. Okay, good. One, two, three. So a little pinch, I'm gonna numb you up. One, two, three, little poke. Sorry. I know. Little sting. So now we are heading into these left facet joints. Little pinch here, I'm just numbing up. A little subcutaneous and intramuscularly. Little pressure here. One, two, three. That's okay. It's your body is it's it's doing the right thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's protecting you. One, two, three. And these I'm just performing as if I'm doing any intra facet injection. There's nothing special about the fact that I'm using PRP. I'm just making my way down into the capsule. I'm just getting as close right into the meat of the joint as possible. So here comes some PRP combined with the Proplas. We're going to inject about one cc to one and a half cc per level. Yeah. And then on my way out, I just put a drop of anesthetic in the muscles to prevent it from spasming. So we cut the fluoro machine at this point and now we're going to switch gears and use musculoskeletal ultrasound guidance in order to direct the needle into the supraspinatus ligaments at L3-4 and at L4-5 just to get some extra stability potentially with a combination of the ProPlaz PRP. So now what we're doing is we're going to head into the supraspinatus ligament and a little bit of the inner spinous ligament, which lies right beneath it at the L4-5 um, disc space. And we're going to use a combination of PRP and ProPlaz. So I'm going to numb with a 25 blue inch and a quarter needle hooked up to a catheter. I'll give the anesthetic as I go. And then once I get into the ligament, I'll switch my syringe. Okay, so a little poke, final needle. One, two, three. Okay, so here comes a little bit of pressure. A little discomfort. One, two, three. So once we get right in that valley and you feel a little resistance, then you know you're in the ligament. Put about one to two cc's. So you could see it dropping. And we're done. You did great. So that concludes the procedure. We just completed bilateral L3-4 and L4-5 uh, intrafacet capsule with PRP and ProPlaz, as well as L3 through L5 supraspinous interspinous ligament with PRP ProPlaz, and L3-4, L4-5 half in, half out transforaminals with PRP.